I thought the memo said football on the beach, not volleyball. <laughs> and here the your plumber friend got dressed up in football duds for nothing. But then again, football on the beach would just sound silly. Yeah, it's nowhere near uh, even enough for for a real football field. I don't think Mario even likes football. Hey, Bisonos, this is Toon Gamer 23. Welcome back to Let's Play Super Mario Odyssey. So I guess I have nothing better to do. Just nope. Oh. Well, <laughs> you call that a mistake? I call that a happy accident. <laughs> I call that a happy accident. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, we've, we're just about done with exploring, with backtracking the world, so, okay, so, I'm not sure if we saw this brochure, but let's, let's read it. Seaside Kingdom, where the sea meets the sun, Bubbleane, the relaxing resort by the carbonated sea. Population, middling. Size, wide. Locals, Bubblinians. Currency, shell-shaped. Industry, bubbly water and tourism. Temperature, average 88 degrees. Nice and balmy, 88 degrees. The glass tower shines in the setting sun. Raise a glass. The spectacle known as glass tower isn't just majestic. It also fulfills the critical role of manufacturing the famous local product, Sparkle Water. It stands atop the glass palace, which has a uniquely beautiful architectural style. It's a treasure to be explored. A miracu Behold the power of carbonation. A miraculous mixture. The four fountains in Bubblane spray seawater towards the glass tower. The ocean here is carbonated, but otherwise unremarkable. However, when blended in the glass tower, it takes on a deep, elegant flavor and becomes sparkle water. This treasured beverage is said to bring good fortune, happiness, and even romance to those who drink it, which has led to it being featured in many wedding ceremonies. And the Gushens are nature's fire hoses. These unusual creatures collect seawater constantly. They use this water both to defend themselves and to propel themselves, sometimes straight up. Alright. Oh yeah, I know all about these guys. They look even bigger in person. And I'm gonna say it, they... Um, I actually found the, the one in 64 a lot scarier, but props to them for making making it look really photorealistic. A love nest for eels. In addition to the fun resort spots found in Bubbling, there are some notably dangerous locations as well. One of these is the underwater cave connected to the lighthouse where gigantic creatures called mares make their nests and shoot, at, and shoot out their long bodies in response to stimuli. A little caution can go a long way when exploring this place. Nature's hot tub. A ways away from the beach sits an outdoor bath fed by a natural hot spring. Featuring full ocean views, it has become quite popular with tourists. This spring was formed by volcanic activity on the ocean floor, and it's said to have numerous medicinal effects. Take one dip, and we're sure you'll fall for its charms. It's also a lovely natural reprieve from the modern resort developments. Deep enough for a full body soak. And even more. My boy almost drowned in there once. Relaxing competition. When in bubbling, be sure to enjoy a game of beach volleyball on the local court. The on-site coach gives strong guidance, even for beginners. As they say around here, let's play! The tan of a true beach volleyball enthusiast. Oh, <laughs> can't believe I didn't notice that. It's just stays out often, I guess. Three keys to the kingdom. One, gasp at the sight of all four fountains spraying, spraying into the glass tower. Two, refresh, ref, refresh yourself with the fizzy delights of bubbling in seawater. 
Three, play in the action-packed volleyball beach volleyball tournaments. All right. All right, set sail. We are off to the Luncheon Kingdom to purchase some moons. And yeah, I'm gonna read the brochure here too, so. I actually think there was uh, like a couple of kingdoms I missed for the brochure. I don't know. Okay. Perona Plaza. Peronza Plaza. Alright. Let's go shopping. Again. Alright. Yes, by ten. Okay, shopping in Mount Volbano. Alright, sweetness. So, let's see. Deposit these beauties. And then I'll be the boring tourist guide who reads the map again. Okay. Luncheon Kingdom, popular destination for the hungry. Mount Volbano, the bubbling burg that heats the meats. We have the meats and the veggies. And everything in between, I guess. Alright. Population plentiful. Size buffet. Locals, Volbanans. Currency, tomato shaped. Industry, food and minerals. Temperature, average 93 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, pot cooking on, the, on a volcano? Only here. Cooking with a volcano. Surrounded by a strange pink lava, Mount Volbano is colorful and vibrant. A vision straight from a picture book it is famous for its cuisine with dishes simmered over the volcano and chuck full of the local produce that grows to enormous size thanks to the volcanic climate. That remains unexplained, but who cares, it's Mario game. The gates of a gourmet paradise. The historic Old Town. On your way to Mount Volbano, you'll pass through the Old Town ringed by the ruined walls that once enclosed the town. These sturdy cut stone walls even now suggest the prosperity of those times. Atop the walls are little mounds of salts carried by the wind and piled up naturally. Visitors can walk among, along the tops of the walls. Do so if you get a chance. The sights here are very different from the colorful scenery of Peronza Plaza, but equally breathtaking. And twice as salty. Cheese is hard as rock. The cheese in Mount Volbano is quite hard. Likely because it is left near the lava and dries up completely. The locals chisel it with hammers. You're welcome to join. I hear frying pans are equally as effective. Okay, cooking carnival. The highlight of Mount, Mount Volbano's year is the cooking carnival where visitors from all over the world come to sample the famous stupendous stew. While cooking on a volcano is, of course, a grand spectacle, the dish itself has a surprisingly delicate flavor. Described most frequently in reviews as a melty del delicious deliciousity. I, I guess that's how it's pronounced. Locals hard at work preparing for the event. Alright. A resting place for meat. Giant slab of meat used in the stupendous stew is crusted generously in salt and left to rest on a high perch near the volcano. Uh, uh, near the volcano. 
Aging the meat high above the lava, cooled by the wind, is essential to creating the core flavor. If you arrive before the cooking carnival, be sure to take the opportunity to visit the platform and see the meat resting soundly before its long journey. Giant slab of meat surveys its domain. A little marble around the edges. I like that. Like a little fat on my meat. Peronza Plaza. Be sure to visit the centrally located Peronza Plaza for a friendly welcome. Once among the colorful heaps of giant ingredients and succulent smells, you may find it hard to leave. All the ingredients here are gigantic. No sh**, Sherlock. Three keys to the kingdom. Sample the famous dish stupendous stew. It's what the locals eat. Gape at exotic ingredients like gigantic vegetables and rock hard cheeses. Three, marvel at the preserved architecture, the best kept secret in tourism. Alright, moving on. Okay, so. There's no reason to go to Ruin Kingdom, so let's go to Bowser's Kingdom. So the last moon for the Sand Kingdom is here, and so is Hint Art for the last red moon here, so be sure to check those out. Alright. Alright, so let's go to the shop. And unlike all the other moons, this one I'm pr I'm positive I took. Okay, so it was six paces from the shop. Or let's see, there it is. There you are. Come to me. Found with Sand Kingdom art. All right. So it's October the twentieth. Odyssey is one week away from turning two years old. Man, I'm just... Okay. Well, anyway, I'm close to being done with it, so... Okay, so... Oh, wait a minute. Let's change it to something a little bit more fitting. Nope. <laughs> not, not that. Uh, Christmas time quite yet. Maybe once I get this uploaded it will be. Okay. Happy headband. This coil headband is perfect when you want to cover just a bit of your head. Happy outfits. Traditional clothing designed to be easy to move around in at a festival. Okay. He just looks so ready to serve some sushi on the side, so. Okay, so, let's take a look at the hint art we have in this kingdom. All right. Okay, this time I'm taking a picture of it. Alright. So it's right next to a giant cactus in the Sand Kingdom. Okay, so... We'll be going back to the Sand Kingdom once again. And that's not all. Let's see. Oh, wait a minute. This side. Okay. Warp painting back to the seaside kingdom. Let's -a go. Being transported from Japan all the way to who knows where. I like to think of it as a good anime idea, just like uh, 
Just like this sushi chef who's down on his luck, just finds his magical war painting and gets transported to a world of wonder and mystery. Okay, diving platform. Alright, sweet. Secret path to Bubbleane. Alright. Great. So we're... Really, now we're cooking. Alright. Let's do the time warp again! I, I love that song. Especially around this time of year, so... Alright, so... So I guess we'll... Let's see... Bowser's Kingdom, well-defended castle floating among glowing clouds. Bowser's Castle, the castle that walled off the sky. Population middling, size sprawling. Locals, stairface ogres. Currency, oblong. Industry, Hanafuda cards. And temperature is average 79 degrees Fahrenheit. Alright, mounts big enough to climb on. Alright, terrifying gatekeepers. Don't run afoul of the staircase stairface ogres that guard this kingdom. When they spot an intruder, they bring their huge mallets down. No questions ask. asked. On the other hand, you have to admire their tenacity and work ethic. The scars on their faces show that they don't give up easily. Architecture as lovely as the scenery. Yeah, like I said of and the when we were visiting Bowser's Kingdom for all the other moons. Like, he should, he should really give his contractor and architecture a raise for this. Beautiful tile work. This kingdom's architecture is unique. Roofs are made of heavy layer tiles that will not budge even if walked upon. They also create a uniformity in the overall design, enhancing the beauty of the palace. Though you can move along the roofs, this palace rests quite high in the sky, and if you fall off, you will most definitely die. It's not the surest footing either, so be careful. The whole thing. All along the walls, these holes were meant to allow defenders to shoot at invaders, but nowadays you're more likely to find a demon or a snake coming out than an arrow. Okay, well, that doesn't make it any less intimidating. Okay, so. Statues guard the court. The palace tower highlights the inner citadel, and the gate leading to it is guarded by fearsome statues. And we'll give Bowser props to, to making intimidating statues. Those look nice. Statues are fashioned after gods of wind and thunder, the perfect motif for a sky palace. And since they are modeled on, ba on Bowser, the ruler of this kingdom, they serve as a warning to foes here and abroad. Statues are not, they're certainly imposing. Mm-hmm. I would agree. Impressive fortifications surrounding the inner citadel are second and third courts. The second court is especially fortified with many cannons to repel invaders. Cannonballs often roll along the ground and many tourists fall trying to evade them. Legends speak of invaders repelling the cannonballs with spears, but no mere mortal could hope to do this. So try not to get too close. Beware rolling ordnance. An oasis of calm. The elegant garden is a balm for the brutality of this kingdom and will help you forget all the hardships you face to reach it. You can even buy souvenirs, so be sure to stop by. These statues called Gizo stand in a row. I think that's how it's pronounced. Gizo, Gizo, I don't know. Three keys to the kingdom. Dark past the silent and lethal stairface ogres. 
to avoid being distracted by the ominous yet brightly glowing clouds. Three, survive the various traps designed to end your trip early. Says you, my trip has just been... Oh, wait a minute. I, I I get it. Okay, so there's a purple dot. That's for the Seaside Kingdom. And here's a red dot for Bowser's Kingdom and a green one for the Okay, so I think I I think I get it. Okay, so it's it's moons that course it's the colors of the moons that correspond to the kingdoms that we've completed. All right, so I get it now. Okay, so one last moon for Bowser's Kingdom. And three more for Mushroom Kingdom. Let's see. Is there any more? Nope. That's it. Okay. Great. Oh, wait a minute. Almost forgot. Almost forgot those ten extra moons. Okay. Gee, I wonder why. Okay, so let's take a look see just to make sure we didn't Okay, so shopping at Bowser's Castle. Okay, so we didn't. Alright. Alright, so I'll take those with pleasure. Alright. Shopping at Bowser's Castle. Sweetness. Alright, out we go. Sorry, ladies. Gotta go. All right. The blood moons have been have been deposited. All right. All right, great. So we're almost done. We're almost done with Earth. So now in the moon. Okay, so Oh, let's go back to the Sand Kingdom. All the way back to the desert. So we can get our final moon for Bowser's Kingdom. I guess while we're here, we'll play a round or two of Balloon World to to get just enough coins for the last two kingdoms on our list. That would be the Moon Kingdom and the Mushroom Kingdom. Okay, so... So there was a tall cactus on the edge, so... Two big ones over here. Let me, let me go see at the Moai habitat. Yeah. Deal with it. Okay, so. So it was on the edge here, so. Let's. Is it. Okay, so there's no rumble to help me, so I'm pretty much flying blind here. Wait a minute. Let's 
check here besides some bushes. There you are. There's the There's the winner. Yes, found with Bowser's Kingdom art. Gorgeous. Okay, so let's take this beauty back to the ship. And deposit it. There's a green one. Glorious. All right. All right. A green dot, a blue dot, red dot, and a purple dot. All right. So. All right. Great. We've. It's a lot on the. It's actually a lot of yellows, but. Uh... All right, so let's see. Okay, yes, yes. All right, so that, that leaves just one left for now. There's actually a couple more places we can find, but I'm gonna play just a teeny tiny bit of Balloon World. Let's. All right. All right. Ooh, 55. All right. Okay, so well, I'll find it. All right. Okay. So let's see what we've got. Link X, Red Fire, Raymond, Kooky. All right, Victoria. Let's try Victoria. All right. 80 meters down. Okay, let's see. Oh, only 12 seconds. There it is. All right. All right, give me that money. Yes. All right. Okay, yes. Okay. Yeah, the balloon worlds. But we'll be back. We'll. We still want more money, more moolah for more costumes. So even after we collect every last moon, we still won't be done. I still want to go for the bonus stuff. Okay. So, there's. Set sail. Okay, so let's go. Since we're close by, let's go for the Mushroom Kingdom. All right. Okay, beautiful. Okay, so let us see. So the last three should be Toadette's moons. Let's see. Art Enthusiast. Alright, let's see. Art Investigate. Okay, so. Wait a minute. There's 15? I think it's. I think there's some on the dark side of the moon, so. So maybe if we go there, we'll. Okay, so we can only get two more from Toadette right now, so... Okay. Okay. Let's... Congratulations, Mario! You achieved something new! You're now achieving this art enthusiast! Wow. And now you can do it to have a power moon! You've earned it! Alright. Art enthusiast. And the next one shall be... World Warper. Okay. 
Great. Okay, so that leaves one last teeny tiny moon here, but we shall be back. So, that does it for most every other place on Earth. Except for the moon. The the dark side and the darker side. We'll be going back to Honey Loon Ridge to catch to purchase ten more moons, but let's purchase ten more here. Alright. Shopping near Peach's Castle. Alright. Great. We're getting closer to maxing out. Okay, yes! Nine hundred and seventy, okay. Sweetness. All right. Um, actually, I don't think... I'm positive that I didn't read the brochure for this kingdom, so... Okay. Mushroom Kingdom. Most famous of all kingdoms. Peach's Castle. The elegant heart of the kingdom. Population middling. Size whitish. Locals, toads. Currency, 64-esque. Industry, pipes, and tourism. Temperature, average 81 degrees Fahrenheit. You always know whose castle this is. Yeah, yeah, we all, we all do. A lovely portrait in glass. Because Princess Peach is so often absent from her kingdom, her citizens took it upon themselves to create a stained glass portrait of her on the castle balcony. While a pale reflect reflection of the genuine article, the portrait brings comfort to the citizenry when their princess can't be with them. Less art storage and more art prison. I get, well, I guess with the rematches, that makes sense. Towering mysteries. In older times, the towers dotting the landscape here were watchtowers. Now they hold and preserve a series of mysterious paintings. These incredibly detailed works are so real that admirers speak of being pulled into another world by the paintings. Nah, I'm sure they're not that realistic. However, it's extremely rare for tourists to be permitted to see them due to some undescribed danger and casual visits are discouraged. All right. Nut mushrooms. These fruit thrive in warm climate here and are a favorite of many creatures that reside in the mushroom kingdom. And I still say they're clearly wumpa fruit. Places to relax. The toads of the Mushroom Kingdom value their relaxation and have created several lovely spots on the castle grounds for that purpose. Neither too small nor too large, and with just the right amount of ornamentation, these plazas and courtyards exemplify the best traits of this kingdom. An image of the national attitude. Yes, sir. I, I love fountains. I'm just saying that a fact about myself. I love fountains. Love taking pictures of them. Love the different styles and the ornamentation. Yeah, anyway. Slightly scary woods. Even the serene mushroom kingdom has its more dangerous locals. This forest was originally planted for mushroom cultivation. But while the mushrooms have flourished, a large number of wild Goombas have also moved in. While it's come to be known as Goomba Woods, it's still a pleasant place for a stroll. So if you're not afraid of these fearsome beasts, why not treat yourself to a walk? A bit more dangerous than it looks. A bit. Uh. A castle's water feature. The only lake on the castle grounds features a small but lovely waterfall and is a popular spot to visit. The lake formed naturally, but some claim that its shape is familiar. Hmm. Not very deep, so a good place to swim. 
Not if you're a dory, I don't think, because this... There's not any place for this door, poor door to go. Alright, three keys to the kingdom. Visit Peach's Castle, the face and the heart of the kingdom. Two, relax in the various soothing spots scattered about. Three, stroll through the rolling hills and dales of the castle grounds. Over the hills and over the dales. Alright. All right, so that does it for the backtracking part. And now I do believe it's time to visit the dark side. Right after a low visit to the Honey Loon Ridge for some, some more moons. <coughs> All right, skip it. Skip that one. All right. Okay, just enough moon, just enough coins for ten more. Okay, Honey Loon Ridge. Yes. All right. By ten. Great. All right. Shopping in Honey Loon Ridge. Okay. Isn't there a description? A power moon that was almost tripped over in Honey Loon Ridge. Huh. Well, I guess there's more than one, it seems. Alright. Okay, let's deposit these bad boys. Alright, only 20 left, or 19 left, I guess. Alright, now is the time to go to the dark side. Dun, 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 Join the dark side, Mario. We have many. We have cannolis. And cookies. And donuts. And anything your heart desires. Alright. Dark side. Rabbit Ridge. Okay. So after all this time of building up to this, we are finally getting to the final parts of the game. This is it, where we have a rematch with the Brutals and finally collect every last moon that's not on, that's, that's not on Earth. Okay, but obviously that'll wait until the next part. So thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe, and if you would leave a comment and or like, that would be most appreciated. Until next time on Super Mario Odyssey, this is ToonGamer23 signing out. Alright, do your stretches. Alright, I'll... This is about to be go time. Right after a quick power nap.